Hey guys, this is your girl Jennifer Land, a crown jewel, and I am back with another YouTube video. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So I am going to call this video Conversation with Crown. And this is going to be somewhat of a QA session where I am addressing some of the comments that were made in the house guest make room video that I did. Um, and so just to sum it up, guys, um, before I, well, before I get started, I will say, you know, the, whatever I put on here for the most part, this is stuff that the Lord gives me. Anytime I say a prophetic word, a dream, I always say, take it back to the Lord to see if this is in fact for you, because not everyone's situation is going to be the same when it comes to kingdom marriage. Not everyone's situation is going to be the same. Everybody is walking a different walk. Um, you should be taking these things back to the Lord to see what type of revelation he is giving you, what type of instruction is he given you not everything is going to apply for the same person and so <clears throat> i will say it is not easy to get on a platform as a new youtuber put out prophetic words to give advice um to basically pour into other people and then you have people getting on youtube that are making inappropriate comments you know, calling you demonic, calling you, saying that you're from Satan, rebuking you and all these different things. So I will say this right now, I've never disrespected anyone on my channel. If you are making these comments towards me and you don't know what the Lord has given me because you have not went before the Lord and, you know, taken back what I said, if you're just flat out making comments saying, you know, I rebuke you, this is Satan and all this and that, I, I will report you and then I'm going to block you because no one deserves to be treated like that at the end of the day. No one deserves to be treated like that. And this is not easy. Um, I want to be as respectful as possible, but no one is going to tell me how to run my channel. <laughs> and that's all that I can say about it. I'm going to give it to you the way the Lord gave it to me. and if people don't like it, then this is probably not the channel for you. And that's the best way that I can say it. But I am asking everyone that visit this channel to please be respectful, because if not, I'm just going to report and block you and I'm just going to keep it moving. So I don't want to dwell on the negative, but let me get started. I just wanted to put that out there because I have received some really crazy comments and I know it's the Lord working with me because as soon as I started doing this, as soon as my channel started growing and getting traffic, now I got witches and warlocks coming and saying this and saying that, pretending like you're really from the Lord. No, you're not from, you're not from, you're not coming from God when you're making threats, when you're, you're coming on my channel rebuking. Now, if you feel like you have revelation behind what I'm saying, feel free to back it up with scripture, but please do it in a respectful manner. But again, people like to put limits on God and you have no idea what he's telling me. You have no idea, like I've said from the jump, this was not my plan to get on YouTube and give prophetic words. I've said that several times. It was not my plan, but God kept saying, get on YouTube. I had something totally different in mind, but once I got on here, he started speaking. So again, I am asking you guys to be respectful because if not, if you're not respecting me, if you're not respecting the members on this channel, again, you're just going to get blocked and you're going to get uh, reported. So let's get started. <laughs> I'm going to address some of these comments on here, but I would like for everyone that has questions about whether your kingdom spouse is supposed to come and stay with you, I need you guys to read the entire chapter of Philemon 1. It's only one chapter in the book of Philemon. 
meditate on that and then take it back to the Lord and see what he gives you. Some of these kingdom spouses, they are going to uh, go through judgment and a lot of them, they're not going to be left with anything. That may not be every kingdom spouse story. The Lord may uh, have you guys to continue to be separated. They may get themselves totally together and then come rushing back in to propose to you and come back in a different way. And you guys live life happily ever after. Some of the other spouses, they may be stripped of everything, including the people in their life, and they may need your help. But again, I can't answer those questions for you guys. You have to take this stuff back to the Lord. So like I said, I would appreciate if you have questions about how you may have to help your kingdom spouse. If they don't have anywhere to go, read Philemon 1 and then go before the Lord and see what he gives you. But let me address some of these comments. So, um... Someone put in the comments, they wanted to know about preparing for, so the video is preparing um, a, a house guest, prepare, uh, prepare, make room, house guests make room. That's the name of the video. So I'm addressing comments on there. So someone wanted to know how is this biblical? Isn't this shacking? So they're saying, if you have to provide a space or a place for um, your kingdom spouse to say, if they end up homeless, isn't this shacking? How is this biblical? I mean, my thing is, if you go back and listen to that video, I never said once. I said prepare. I said you may have to, um, you know, give your a kingdom spouse some money to stay in a hotel room. Um maybe even uh, money to uh, get them started in an apartment. Well, I didn't say that, but I'm saying that now. Um, they, You may have to have them stay in a guest room. Uh, they may have to sleep on your couch. I never said, you know, if they come and stay with you, they're going to permanently be staying with you. I never said they will be sleeping in the same bed with you. I never said anything about fornicating. Even if you guys listen to the Risa Tisa video, what did I say? For those of you that listened to that video, I said the moment she decided to move that man into her house, and they if you guys listen to her story, they were fornicating. I never mentioned anything about fornicating. If your spouse needs to come and stay with you, you guys should not be sleeping in the same bed. You should not be sleeping in the same bed. You should not be sleeping in the same room. If they are needing to come and stay with you, then that means you should be focused on helping them to get delivered and helping them in some areas that the Lord is telling you to help. That means it's about helping bringing them to salvation is not even about the marriage at that point because they have to, if they're coming to you and they're broken down and out, then this is another part of the process. So this is not hopping right into getting married. Again, everybody's situation is going to be different. But again, if your kingdom spouse has to come and stay with you, there you should not be this this does not mean have sex this does not mean sleep in the same room this does not mean sleep in the same bed this does not mean kiss this does not mean hug i have not said any of that i have not said any of that but again if your spouse needs help and they have nowhere to go if you know that you are in the position to help them only you know how you will be able to help them and again, the Lord is going to tell you how he wants you to help them. Um, but by no means am I saying shack up and skip the marriage and do all these things that you know you should not be doing. Because again, if they're coming to you, they are in need of help. Um, this is going to be part of the process of bringing them back to the Lord. Hopefully that process would already have somewhat started, but a lot of you guys are going to help your spouse get delivered of some things. I've even seen that in the spirit. Um, 
So yeah, that is that we're not shacking. We're not talking about having sex and all these things that we know are not of God. Okay, so let me see. Um, so another person said, this is deception. We are to test the spirits. Everything you hear will not come from God. Um, it will not come from the God, not come from God. Devil always try to throw himself in there too. So we have to watch what we put out in the atmosphere because it may cause others to stumble. I just gave you guys scripture to back it up. Um, a lot of times I may not give scripture because um, if I'm at home doing a video, I will give scripture. Um, if I'm out driving and doing a video, um, I'm just trying to get the message out there, uh, what the Lord gave me. He's given me so many different things. Sometimes I just need to hurry up and get the message out there because I'm behind on things he's given me to put out. So Again, if I give you guys a prophetic word, you have to put in the work and say, Lord, is this for me? Um, you know, you have to do your work and find the scriptures yourself if I have not given it to you. But most of all, you should be taking it back to the Lord, praying to see if it is for you, because it is not it, everything that I put out is not going to be for everybody because again, everybody's story is different. So I'm going to disagree with that comment because I just, I clearly just gave you a scripture. Now I don't know this person's personal situation, but again, Philemon one, take it back to the Lord, see what he gives you. Um, let's see here. So another person said, I'm pretty sure this message is not for me because if my kingdom spouse comes to live with me, it would be considered shacking. So he would be referred to the nearest shelter to live. The Holy Spirit in me will not even allow me to spend time with him at his house. We are attracted to each other and have to put much and have so much passion. I have trouble even if he is, I will have trouble even if he is sleeping on a sofa, the self-control will turn into temptation. So if he is not ready for marriage, then he will have to find somewhere else to stay. Imagine some of these women desperately wanting their kingdom spouses. And then he calls them and say, can I come stay with you? Nine times out of 10, you are going to think that it's time. Then you come home and see him packing up, telling you that he is going back to the counterfeit's house. Just think about it. Well, I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. If you think, okay, so this is going to be, a, so this is obvious, um, a comment from someone who is standing or believing for their kingdom spouses. It sounds like this person has already been in a relationship with their kingdom spouse and they are in divine separation and they are believing that God is gonna return the kingdom spouse to them. My thing is, if you look back over the entire journey from start to finish, with, and I'm speaking spe specifically to this person, if you look back over the entire journey from start to finish, all the way up, well, not to finish, but from start all the way up to this point, with your kingdom spouse, all that you had to go through, all the heartache, the heartbreak, um, the ups to downs, in my mind, I am not willing to risk sleeping with someone just because of this level of attraction that I have um, towards him. When I think about my own situation, it's not worth it. Yes, we are human. You know, we are made of flesh and all these different things. But again, if these people are needing to come and stay with you, this is about their deliverance at this point. This is about their healing at this point. A lot of these people, they are coming back wounded. Again, if they need to come back and stay, uh, come and stay with you, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. So this is something that you should be praying about even now. If you are praying for your spouse, if you are praying over your kingdom love story, God should be communicating with you anyway about things that are to come, what he may want you to do. But in my mind, 
if I've been through, if I just look at everything that I've been through with this whole kingdom spouse journey, there is no way I will get up in the middle of the night and leave my house if I have to, if I have my kingdom spouse here and I know that I'm supposed to be helping him and bringing him to the de to deliverance. If I feel like I'm having so much temptation and I can't control myself, then I might need to get up in the middle of the night and take a ride. I may need to get on my knees and pray, do something. But at the end of the day, it's not worth it to me. I just feel like right now I'm in a different place. Sex is the last thing on my mind because I have been through too much with my situation. And it's just the last thing on my mind. And that's why I tell you guys, if you keep in the forefront of your mind that the kingdom marriage is not about you, it's about God and his plan for you to do a work in the kingdom with your spouse. If you keep that in the forefront of your mind, you should be able to deny your flesh when it comes to sex and all these things that you know you are not supposed to be doing. So again, this is not a situation where we're talking about moving in your kingdom spouse and having sex with them and you know do uh giving in to temptation you guys should be fasting together praying together if they return again not every kingdom spouse is going to have to come and live with you guys but again you have to take it back to the lord now um yeah and you she mentioned that uh then you come home to see him packing and him telling you that he is going back to the counterfeit. So I'm questioning if this has already been a situation where um, this person has already experienced this. Again, um, if we're thinking about this, we have to increase our level of faith uh, because the counterfeits are being moved, moved out the way. Um, I've done a number of videos on counterfeits. We should be praying against the counterfeits, witchcraft, and all these things. When the spouses return, we want to have a conversation with them to see where they are, uh, what's going on. I cannot tell you guys what to say. Only the Lord can tell you that. Um, your kingdom spouse may come and say, I need a place to stay. I need a place to stay. The Lord may have already told you, do not let them come and stay because they're not ready. They're going to go. The Lord will tell you anything that you need to know. If you guys have these kind of questions, you have to go before the Lord. You know, a lot of times I will, if I have a question for the Lord, before I go to bed, I will ask the, I will ask God to give me a dream. And he, a lot of times he will give me a dream that night because I'm getting in the habit where I'm asking God's permission of a lot of things. I want to, I'm, I'm trying to consult with God about everything in my life before I make any decisions because I do not want to waste time. So if you start just having conversation with the Lord, asking him questions, the Lord knows your heart. He's waiting for you to talk to him about these things. Um, and even to this point, look at how things are changing in your personal life. Do you feel like some things are changing in your personal life because it may have something to do with what's going to happen with your kingdom marriage and your kingdom love story for the future, the near future? So that's something to think about. I know that's something that's going on with my situation, but I can't speak on that right now. But again, we should be having regular conversation with the Lord about this, about this stuff. So I hope that answers this person's question. Um, again, we need to have conversation with the Lord, get in prayer. Sex should be the last thing on our mind. I am not looking to indulge in any type of sexual interaction with my kingdom spouse until we have those papers until we walk down the aisle that like i said that is the furthest thing from my mind and the thing about it is this is how a lot of women get trapped in these situations with men because you know we have sex and all these different things and then you can't see clearly because what you have opened the door to the enemy. So 
I am by no means telling you guys to shack, have sex, any of that. I've never said any of that in my videos. This is simply about helping the kingdom spouse and bringing them to a place of deliverance. The Lord has shifted certain things in these kingdom spouses' lives to the point where they're going to be stripped of everything. They're not going to have anybody but you. They're going to see the God in you and God is going to work through you to help them bring them to deliverance. And then at that point, once they have come to deliverance, certain things have started taking place. Um, at that point, it may be time for you guys to get married together. I don't know how long that process will be. It may end up being a very fast process. Some of the kingdom spouses, like I said, they may come and say, you know what? I've thought about it. I'm in a better place. I've gotten healed. I've done X, Y, Z. I am ready to marry you next month. You got to pray about it. I have already said when my kingdom spouse returns, we need to go on a fast together to see what the Lord has given both of us. So I encourage you guys to do that um, when your kingdom spouses return. Um, let me see if there are any other... Um, I think I removed a couple people as well because they were just being disrespectful on this video. Um, I don't think, I think those were the only two where there were um, questions or there were comments where people did not really uh, agree with the video. Um, so yeah, if you guys read Philemon, if you read Philemon, I'm praying that you guys get a lot of revelation behind that. Um, there are some comments where people are saying that uh, their kingdom spouses, my kingdom spouse, um, brother moved in with him. Um, another person said mine is staying with a friend. Another person said mine is living with the counterfeit still. Um, and then they had a, a angry emoji about that. Um, let's see. So yeah, guys, I think I just really wanted to address um, the people that had concerns about this. Another person said, yes, he is staying with a family member and his ex-wife. Um, mine is staying with his parents. My kingdom spouse is currently in college and she lives off, camp uh, off campus on a, in an off-campus apartment with her best friend. Mine is uh, renting a place, but he doesn't pay rent often. So the thing about it is for these kingdom spouses that are staying with somebody currently, I can't say how it's going to unfold, but I know God is shifting a lot with these kingdom spouses. So uh, like this person that's saying that he doesn't pay rent often, there may end up being a shift with that. I don't want to speak directly over a person's situation um, because I want them to be led by God with that. Um, but the Lord is going to be shifting some things and that's all that I can say. And like I said, everybody's situation is going to be different. Um, these spouses, like I said, they may end up losing everything. And when they end up losing everything, they're going to realize that you were a safe place. You were somebody that really cared about them. Um, a lot of these kingdom spouses, they're going to get burnt and dead end big time by these counterfeits. And they, like I said, they're going to realize that you were the person that cared, that loved them, that had their back. A lot of them, they're going to get burnt by their family members the family members are going to turn their backs on them. And like I said, this is all being, um, um, God is called, it's causing an interruption. So his will can be done again. I really wish you guys would just keep in mind that these kingdom marriages are not about us. So in order to get the kingdom spouse to a certain place, there has to be an interruption. If they're out there, sleeping, fornicating, drugging, drinking, partying, spending money while doing X, Y, Z, they've done you wrong on top of that. There's going to be a judgment call over their life. They're going to go through judgment. And so 
I don't want you guys to wish anything on anyone. And I have to even respond to my emails because I think somebody sent me an email um, saying that they kind of pray that um, the family would turn their backs onto the kingdom spouse. I think you guys should be, be very careful what, what you're praying when he, when it comes to these kingdom spouses or even over anything, because you want to make sure that you're not crossing over into witchcraft, if that makes sense. You don't want to pray. God's will is going to be done regardless. We don't know how God is going to do a thing, but we always want to pray good things over our kingdom spouses. God is going to do what he's going to do regardless. But I hope this somewhat clears things up. I would love if you guys can read Philemon and then, you know, Hop in the comments and let me know what you think after you read Philemon and then go before the Lord, pray about it. See if God, if God gives you revelation or whatever the case may be. Um, but by no means was this video demonic. Was it meant to let uh, somebody down the wrong path? Any of that. This is a safe space, guys. This is a safe space. I read all the comments. I may not always have time to respond because I'm on the go. I'm doing so many different things right now that the Lord has me doing, but I appreciate all the support. I appreciate you guys giving feedback on the videos and this is a safe uh, a safe space. I just want to ensure you guys that there is nothing demonic or crazy or anything like that going on over here. So I speak nothing but blessings over you guys. I speak nothing but blessings over your kingdom marriages, your kingdom spouses. Uh, may the Lord prosper everything that you put your hand to. May he cover every spouse, uh, every kingdom spouse from head to toe. May angels be with you guys everywhere that you go. This is a safe space. That's all that I want you guys to know. I don't know everything. Um, like I said, this is a new phase in my life. Um, God is working, but uh, this is a safe space safe space. So I love when you guys comment in a com uh, comment section, but like I said, nothing but peace, love, and blessings to all of you guys. I'm going to read a little bit of a Philemon. And then, like I said, if you guys can read it on your own, maybe um, tonight, if you get any revelation, pray, let me know what you guys get. I don't know everything. I just know what the Lord gives me. So, all right, guys, stay tuned. So once again, I need everyone that has questions about this video that I am making regarding your kingdom spouse needing to come and stay with you. I need everyone to go and read Philemon 1. There's one chapter and I'm not going to read the full thing, but if you go and read the full chapter, you will get understanding behind what I am saying when I am speaking about your spouse coming to stay with you. Again, this is not for everyone. As you know, in many of my videos, I always say, take it back to the Lord because the same thing is not going to apply for everyone. Um, everyone's situation is going to be different. This is why you should be going before the Lord praying. So I'm going to go over a couple of scriptures um, in Philemon, but I am encouraging you guys, if you have questions, to read the entire chapter of Philemon, meditate on it, go before the Lord and see what he gives you. Only you know what your situation is. Only you and the Lord. I do not know you guys' this personal situation. So um, there are a total of um, Philemon, it goes one through 25. So I need you guys to read that entire chapter and then please come back and make comments on this video if you still feel like um, 
you know, you have some questions or you feel some type of way, but at the end of the day, you should really be going before the Lord because I can only give you guys what he gives me. And again, this is not going to be for everyone. So I am going to start at Philemon 1.10. So it says, I appeal to you for my own spiritual child, Omnius, meaning profitable, whom I have begotten in the faith while while a captive in these chains. Once he was unprofitable to you, but now he is indeed profitable to you as well as to me. I am sending him back to you in his own person. And it is like sending my very heart. I would have chosen to keep him with me in order that he might minister to my needs in your stead during my imprisonment for the gospel's sake. But it has been my wish to do nothing about it without first consulting you and getting your consent in order that your benevolence might not seem to be the result of compulsion or of pressure, but might be voluntary on your part. Perhaps it was for this reason that he was separated from you for a while that you might have him back as yours forever, not as a slave any longer, but as something more than a slave, as a brother, a Christian, especially dear to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh as a servant and in the Lord as a fellow believer. If you didn't consider me a partner and a comrade in fellowship, welcome and receive him as you would welcome and receive me. And if he has done you any wrong in any way or owes anything to you, charge that to my account. So this is the Lord saying, anything that your kingdom spouse has done wrong to you, do not hold it against him. Charge it to the Lord. Put it on the Lord's back. It is the Lord's concern. We are to forgive our kingdom spouses. Okay. I, Paul, write it with my own hand. I promise to repay it in full and that and that is to say nothing of that fact that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother. Let me have some profit from you in the Lord. Cheer and refresh my heart in Christ. I write to you perfectly confident of your obedient compliance, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. At the same time, prepare a guest room in expectation of extending your hospitality to me, for I am hoping through your prayers to be granted the gracious privilege of coming to you. I'm going to read that last part one more time. Again, this is not for everyone. And this is Philemon 122 that I'm going to repeat. At the same time, prepare a guest room in expectation of extending your hospitality to me. For I am hoping through your prayers to be granted the gracious privilege of coming to you. So I hope some of this makes sense. Um, if we look at what I read, which is Philemon 10 through 20, 10 through 22, um, it says a lot. Um, I really think that you guys should read the full chapter, but in 10, it is talking about how basically this is the way I'm going to interpret your kingdom spouse. They are, they have been in bondage. They've been in chains. They were no good to you while they were out in the world doing all these different things that the Lord has not caused them to do. They've been in sin. Uh, they've been with the counterfeits, all these different things. They have been caught up behind what the enemy has held over them. They've been caught up. The enemy has had their mind. Uh, the enemy has caused them to come into agreement with him and walk in darkness. 
And the Lord is saying that while all of this was going on with your kingdom spouse, they were no good to you. They couldn't do a thing for you because they were not trying to walk with the Lord. But the Lord is now saying that, you know, they were unprofitable to you during this time, but now the Lord is causing a shift. He's causing a change within your kingdom spouse. And now he, he, that person, whether it's a he or she, they are now going to be profitable to you because the Lord is causing a lot to change in their life. And so, as I said before, many of you guys, you're going to have to help your spouse to deliverance. You're going to have to help them to deliverance. And so this may very well mean that, you know, they may have to come stay with you. They may not. But the Lord is asking you in uh, Philemon, I believe that is, um, where is that? Where he was asking uh, permission. He says that I am sending him back to you to be yours forever. And so the Lord is asking you to partner with the Holy Spirit and to bring your spouse back to where, where they need to be. There's a part that you're going to have to play. But in Philemon um, 114, where it says, um, he is asking your consent in order for this thing to play out the way the Lord needs it to play out. If you guys read scripture by scripture like this, this really speaks to me. And so, like I said, there's a part that we have to play. Our spouses, they are not coming back perfect. I don't know how some of us may have to help them, but the Lord needs your consent to even send them back. So you almost have to come into agreement with what the Lord is um, asking you to do. This is all part of God's plan. So like I said, a lot is going to change. It's going to be shifted. And like I said, it was right there as clear as day in uh, 122, prepare a, a guest room. <laughs> And uh, prepare a guest room. And just as someone would prepare a guest room to you, um, you're going to be um, kind to them. You're going to be loving. This has nothing to do with living in sin. Like I said, this is about bringing the uh, kingdom spouse to deliverance. Whatever they may need, the Lord is going to reveal that to you guys. So let's have some conversation um, in the comments about this, I'm just curious what you guys think once you read uh, Philemon or just based on what I've said so far. Um, so, yeah, I won't say anymore. I just want to wait to see what you guys are going to um, say and how you're going to, you know, respond to everything. This is your girl, Jennifer Land, the crown jewel, and I will talk with you guys next time.